join kids hat family <laughs> Tia Hi Maria Hi Joanna Hi Tofu Hello Tofu Hello Tofu What are you all up to We are completing our art project for tomorrow I also want to do it Can I Wait 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 Tofu Why? All I want to do is add my prints also. I I'll follow your pattern. I'm sorry Tofu, but there's no place on this one. Can I give you another sheet to do this? It's okay if you don't want me to be a part of the fun, Tia. Tofu Oh now you have time for me Well actually I had a story for you It's about a lost mitten On a cold winter day when the entire forest was covered in a white blanket of snow a kind mole came upon a warm mitten Oh wow a warm mitten on this cold day I live in it and make it my home for the winters. Just as the mole was making himself comfortable in his new house, a little frog showed up at its mouth. and called out to the mole Hello Mr Mole Oh hi there frog how can i help you It's very cold out here today my feet are freezing in the snow can i share your mitten with you Of course there is enough room in here for both of us So the kind mole welcomed the frog in the mitten. Just as they were warming up, a rabbit comes up to them. Hello friends. It is really cold out here. My tail is freezing. Please give me some space in the mitten. Of course. Come in, come in. The rabbit was very happy for the generosity. And he got into the mitten with the mole and the frog.
Then they had two more visitors. A fox and a vixen. It's so c cold today. My snout is freezing. I feel like I am breathing ice. Can we please get some shelter in the mitten? We're already three in here. It'll be a little tight, but sure, come in. We will manage somehow. Thankful, the fox and the vixen squeezed themselves into the mitten. But there was just no space for anyone to move. Sometimes the rabbit would step on the frog's foot and sometimes the mole stepped on the fox's tail. As they all struggled, a bear came along. A warm mitten and good company. Just what I need on this gloomy cold day. Make room for me, friends. I'm going to come in too. Oh no! But there's no place in here. You're too big for this mitten. I promise I won't take too much space. No, oh, no, 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 no. But the bear didn't listen to them and made it into the already crowded mitten. The animals had no choice now but to stick their heads out of its mouth so that there was space inside for their bodies. And just as they were all finally settling in, a baby mouse came along shivering in the cold. So warm in there. It's so cold here. Look at my tiny tail. It has frozen itself blue. Please let me also come in. Sorry little mouse, but this mitten is completely packed. Even though you are so tiny, there is just no room for you here. Oh, but I see some place. It's all that I need. The little mouse dashed towards the mitten and before anyone could say anything, he climbed onto the bear's nose and sat there. But his cold tail hung there and irritated the bear's nose. He was about to sneeze. Achoo! The bear couldn't hold his sneeze and with a loud sound he sneezed so hard that the Achoo! mitten went flying up, up and up in the air and all the animals got thrown out of it into the cold snow once again. What, Tofu? Hmm, I was going to be the bear in your mitten. 
Yes, and you would have sent it flying into the air. Look, Tia. This Halloween I have collected more treats than any year. Yes, Tofu. Even I have collected more treats than ever. Everybody in the neighborhood was extremely generous. Yes, I think these sweets and toffees will last me through the year. I won't be able to eat them all. Well, I have an idea, Tofu. What idea? We could distribute them in the orphanage. Give them away? No way. But we have so many tofu. Even if mom and dad allowed you to eat them all, you won't be able to finish them without falling sick. So what? I don't want to give them. Okay, Mr. Scrooge. As you feel it. Huh? Who is that? I'll tell you. A Benzer Scrooge. The Christmas Carol Ebenezer Scrooge was an old miser that lived in a friendly town. But he wasn't very friendly. Hey you. Go away. Don't play under my window. Hey, go away. Don't sell your things in front of my house. Wherever Scrooge went, he was extremely mean to people. He wouldn't shell a penny for anything. Not even for those who really needed his help. Can you please help me? Can you please give me change for a dollar? It's Christmas Eve and I want to buy a candy for my little brother. No, go away. I don't have the time to help you. And so he went on through the day. Not spreading cheer in the Christmas season but troubling people. When the day was over, he crawled into his bed to sleep. Just then, the ghost of Christmas past appeared in front of him. Who are you? Why are you here? I am the ghost of Christmas past. I've come to remind you of a Christmas in your childhood. Think back to the Christmas you were home alone reading a book. It was Christmas. Everyone was so happy. All families had gathered together to celebrate the festival. There were gifts and lights all around. But I was home alone. My parents left me alone and went away. I spent the entire Christmas alone reading a book. And since then, I have been alone on Christmas. No one ever wants to spend Christmas with me. I don't want to think about this anymore. Go away! Go away, please! 
In a moment, the ghost vanished. And just as Scrooge was about to sleep, there was a knock on his window. It was the ghost of Christmas present. Ebenza, I have something to show you. Come with me. Now, who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Where are we going? The ghost of Christmas present took Scrooge to a poor man's family and they peeped in through one of his windows. Look at them. They look so happy. They don't have a fancy meal on their table, but they are so happily huddled around it. And the children are singing and dancing. How happy! How happy are they? How are they so happy? It's Christmas. Saying that, the ghost of Christmas present vanished. Scrooge found himself back in his room. As Scrooge lay awake thinking about what he'd just seen when the ghost of Christmas future appeared by his bed. I have some place to take you, Abenza. Come on with me. Uh, who are you? And where are we going? I am the ghost of Christmas future. I am taking you to the future. It's a funeral. But there are so few people here. Looks like the person who died wasn't loved much. Yes, it's your funeral. Listen to what people are saying about you. Well, this was bound to happen someday. I am not surprised that such few people have turned up at his funeral. Well, of course. Who would care about a stingy, mean person like Scrooge? Oh my God! I never cared about anyone as long as I lived. Hence, no one cares for me. Take me back. I can't see this anymore. And so the ghost of Christmas future brought Scrooge back to his room and disappeared. The next morning was Christmas. Scrooge got up with a change of heart. I cannot continue living my life like this. I must change myself and I am starting from today, which is the day of Christmas. Scrooge invited the whole town for a lovely Christmas party. Even though people were surprised, they turned up and had a wonderful time with the newly changed Scrooge. And since then, Ebenza Scrooge became the most loved man in the whole town. Oh boy! Message received. I was really on the wrong path, dear. I have decided not to become another Scrooge. Would you mind fixing up a time with the orphanage? We'll go distribute the treats. I would love to do that, Tofu. See you in some time. Surprise! Our brother has come across and eaten 
up by the stone that the Tosa has brought. We all should be careful from now on. Tofu, it's your friend Kim. She needs some help from you. Tell her I'll call her later. Kim, Tofu will call you back. Families from the store. Why didn't you talk to her, Tofu? I'm watching TV. I don't want to talk to her right now. But she needed your help. That's okay. If it's urgent, she can call someone else. She's called the second time and you've refused to talk to her. That's mean, Tofu. Especially because I remember how she was always there when you needed help from her. What difference does it make? Hear it for yourself. It was Christmas Eve and Mary was waiting for her Uncle Peter. Each year he gave her a present on this day. Hello Mary. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you Uncle. Merry Christmas to you too! Wow! It's a nutcracker! It's so lovely! Let me put it in the cabinet with my other toys. night when Mary was sleeping, a sound woke her up. What's that? Mice! So many of them! Mary saw that there were many, many mice running around on the floor of her room. And there was a stranger that was the Mice Queen who had seven heads. Oh no! Am I dreaming? How can this be? Mary is in trouble. Friends, let's go to her rescue. The brave Nutcracker spoke to all the soldiers that stood with him in the cabinet. The soldiers found courage in the Nutcracker's charge and they drew out their swords and jumped out of the cabinet. All of them attacked the mice with their swords, guns and sugar cannons. But soon the Nutcracker was surrounded by mice. I'm surrounded. I can't free myself. Oh no! The Nutcracker! Seeing the Nutcracker surrounded, Mary took one of her shoes and sent it flying at the mice. But before she could see what happened, she fainted. The next morning she woke up and found herself in her own bed. She tried explaining to everyone what had happened, but no one believed her. I saw the mice 
than this seven-headed queen with my own eyes. I have saved the nutcracker. I believe you, Mary. I believe everything you've just said. I'll tell you an interesting story about the nutcracker toy. About my toy? Yes. Many years ago, there lived a mice queen in the toy lands King's Palace. One day, she lost seven of her sons to the traps laid by the king's men in the castle. Oh no! The angry queen cursed the princess and turned her into an ugly princess. The spell could be broken only if she could break the hardest nut. The poor princess. What happened then, uncle? The nutcracker prince helped the princess break the hardest nut. As soon as he had done that, the spell was lifted off the princess. However, the spell shifted on to the prince and he became ugly. The princess must have felt so sad. Quite the opposite. She forgot all about the prince, how he had helped her, and she chased him away. Later, Mary went to her room. and looked at the nutcracker. She now looked at him in a different light. And before she knew, she loved him. One day, the doorbell rang very early morning. Mary went to see who it was. It was a very handsome young boy. Hello. How can I help you? Uh, hello Mary. I am the Prince of Toyland. How can that be? You were cursed by the Mice Queen to be an ugly nutcracker. Your true love towards me has lifted the spell of me and made me handsome once again. Will you marry me? Yes! Mary said yes and became the princess of Toyland. She lived with the prince happily ever after. Uh, I am being the princess who forgot the nutcracker prince. Am I not? Absolutely, Tofu. Kim's always been there to help you. And now, when she needs your help, you're ignoring her. Oh, I feel terrible about the way I have behaved. Let me call up Kim and help her. Don't forget to apologize to her. Thanks, dear. I won't forget. snowballs at me. Stop! <laughs> but that's how I play with snow. I love making snowballs. Tofu, it's five days to Christmas. Come, I'll help you make a snowman. No, we made a snowman last Christmas also. Harry will be upset then, Tofu. Don't you want Harry the snowman to be happy? Harry? The snowman? Who is he? I'll tell you Harry's story 
if you help me make a big, lovely snowman. Okay, Tia. Tell me the story and let's start making Harry also. Harry the Happy Snowman Five days before Christmas Eve Santa was working out in his gym practicing his technique of dropping down through chimneys without getting stuck <laughs> Santa has quite a possibility of that Suddenly, one of his reindeers, Donda, came running in. He seemed rather distressed and worried. Santa, Santa! Harry the snowman has run away! I am panicking! Calm down, Donda. There is nothing to worry about. I will personally sort out Harry's problems and bring him back home safe and sound. Donda, alert the elves and begin a search whilst I head back to my sleigh. Santa took off to the skies to find Harry. One place, as he looked down, he saw Harry alone in the snow, heading away from Santa's village. Harry! Harry! Can you hear me? Santa pulled down and landed just beside Harry. But Harry ignored Santa and kept walking. Jump aboard, Harry. Get back in, Harry. But Harry kept on walking away. Santa shouted again. Harry, please listen to me. Talk to Santa. Harry slowly turned around, looked at Santa with tears in his eyes. Harry, my dear, there comes a point in everybody's life when you feel like running away. But that is not the answer. That's not the right thing to do. Please tell Santa your problems. Harry looked at Santa and broke down. Oh, <laughs> no one ever listens to me. No one has time for me. Why me? I am just a stupid, worthless snowman. Nobody loves me. Harry, my boy, you are not worthless. Dry your eyes, wipe your face. Come, I want to show you how important you are. Jump aboard, Harry. Ho, ho, ho. Harry looked at Rudolph. He had his head hung low. Rudolph, my boy, take to the skies, I ordered. Let's prove to Harry how important he really is. And off we go. Ho, ho, ho. as they travelled around the world. Santa showed Harry millions of snowmen, all built by children having fun with the help of their family and friends. Look, Harry, building snowmen bring people together. Harry, imagine a Christmas without a snowman. It'll be incomplete. No fun. Imagine our family without you. Rudolph, 
Take us home, I command. Let's go. While the mood changed in the sleigh and everybody was happy, they approached the North Pole. Look, Harry. They looked down from the sleigh and could see written in the snow in huge letters. Welcome home, Harry. We love you. Everybody from Santa's village was there too to welcome Harry back home. This made Harry so happy. Everyone clapped for Santa. Hmm, Harry could have made a big mistake by running away. But that is not the answer. Just talk to someone and you'll find the ones who have time for you and who truly care. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Tia! Merry Christmas, Harry! We all love you! Always be happy! Now go inside and get some carrots. Let's give Harry a big nose. Let me call all my friends to play and tell them to make more snowman. More friends for Harry. For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.